Hi everyone, it's Eric from ecom12.blogspot.com and welcome to my full review of the LG G3. Now, a big thanks must go to Vodafone for sending me this handset over to review. Now, let's get straight into it. Let's start off with the bad aspects of this LG G3 first. Now, one of the bad aspects, I think, of this smartphone is the lag that is present in the operating system. Now, this has nothing to do with Android, but this is to do with the skin that LG have put over uh, Android. Uh... Everyone's skin has a different kind of weight to it, like TouchWiz has now become super heavy when it used to be very light. HTC Sense used to be heavy, but now it's gone very light itself. It's like it's not even there in terms of how it affects the operating system's performance. And LG G3, I've been noticing lag throughout the whole time. Now, it's not as bad as what you get with Samsung's devices, but whenever I'm swiping between screens, it seems to be doing a good job now. You, you always notice that there's always a lag, like as you can see right now, when I'm just swiping between the widgets. Now this is just one example, there are other examples as well, and it's not the type I can just show you, it happens when you least expect it. So, it's not a deal breaker, but it certainly is one of those things that you would not expect to see happening, and again, it's one of these skins that is causing the problem. So these skins should be much lighter on the actual, on the actual hardware, as opposed, to this, as opposed to being this heavy. The next thing I did not like was the email application. Now, if I go into the email application, you can see over here, if I swipe, it doesn't work. Normally, you're allowed to swipe these applications on the Android email uh, apps, and you're allowed to swipe them to archive or swipe to remove, or either way you can swipe to remove. Apparently, it doesn't let you do that uh, on the G3, which is really, really unfortunate. You're going to have to go through the old route of either just ticking all these boxes and then pressing delete, or you can just do it one at a time by tapping and holding and pressing delete. So, to me, it's something that's an annoyance, and really, I don't like that at all, really. Let's just crank this brightness down so it doesn't mess with the camera. So, yes, the email application I really don't like at all, and actually, there's one more thing about the email application. If I go into it, let's see if it happens now. You have to always press this load full message every single time, and I hope it fails this time, just so I can prove my point. A lot of times I've been having this review unit, there's been times where I had to always, first of all, it's annoying to always press load full message. And when I press it, that it always, something, what it always says sometimes is fail to load, or something along those lines. And that is really, really annoying and really, really frustrating. What I had to actually do is put this phone down and go to my Nexus 7 and look at my emails there, or look at it on my laptop. So it's really annoying that it does that. So, again, another problem right there, which I'm really, really not keen on. And another problem, which is not really much of a problem, but more of something I'm really quite confused by. You saw in my previous video, I did a 4K video test of this smartphone. All the settings I made sure were on 4K and everything, and plus I took the video file straight from the LG G3 and put it on my computer. And I didn't edit it in any way whatsoever, I just uploaded it. It was a raw video file from the LG G3. And for some reason, that did not upload in 4K, which is very, very odd. I'll see if I can do one before I actually have to send this review unit back. I'll see if I can do another 4K video test. But that is something that's very, very odd, and I've never had that kind of confusion when I've been uh, reviewing other smartphones that were capable of 4K video. And believe it or not, guys, those are on my only bad aspects of this phone. Now let's move on to the good aspects. And let's start off with the build quality. I'm going to say, this is one of the most different looking smartphones I have seen in a long, long time. Normally you can show us any smartphone to anyone, and practically the front always looks the same, and it's like a kind of like a template with all smartphones. Uh, the back is the only difference in terms of when you look at different smartphones, but even the back on this looks like it has very, very unique. The whole design of this is so, so unique, and it doesn't look like every smartphone you see out there. Plus, this gold colour... I'm not sure if it's metal, I think it's actually plastic, but it really does look and feel like metal. The black one, yes, is supposed to have that look of brushed aluminium, but the thing is, you can still tell it's plastic. This, you can't even tell. It's like you probably got to actually hold it, and even then you're probably not entirely sure if it's uh, metal or plastic. I'm pretty certain it is plastic, because whenever I pick this up, it's not cold to the touch on the back like other smartphones, like the HTC One M8 or other HTC devices. But that being said... It fools me every single time I just look at it, and I keep forgetting that this is a plastic handset. It does look and sometimes feel like metal as well. I can't really differentiate this feeling between metal or plastic, really, unless I actually think of the details of the materials. Another th thing I really loved, which everyone's going to know, is the 2K display. This is an absolutely wonderful screen. The colours really do pop. There is absolutely so much detail. There's no individual pixels that you can spot, and granted, you couldn't spot any individual pixels on a 1080p panel as well. And 
personally, I think I've actually noticed it. When I go into the YouTube app, you can select so one of the settings which lets you uh, view a YouTube video in 4K, and then it's noticeable for media consumption like that, or if you put some 4K um, media on this uh, device. And this is a 5.5 inch screen, remember that, it really is quite large. However, I've gotten really, really used to it. I've really gotten used to the screen, and I really, really do love it as well. And to tell you the truth, I think 5.5 inches is the maximum I'd go to. I keep changing my screen preference. I say first 5 inches is the maximum I'd go to, but after using this, 5.5 inches is the maximum I would go to. Another thing is the build quality, which I already mentioned, but one thing I want to mention is that you can see over here, there is absolutely no uh, buttons on the side. There's even no buttons on this side over here. There are only buttons uh, on the back, and that's helped to keep the uh, smartphone thinner as well, which is really, really good. And as you can see, uh, there's a power button over there, which at first I thought would be very odd to get used to, but after about three days, uh, I got used to it. And usually, at the beginning, I used to press this, thinking it was one of the power buttons, when really it wasn't. And this moves on nicely to the camera. You heard my little confusion about the 4K video footage, but the camera is extremely nice. The photos have captured a lot of detail. Not as much as I would say the Samsung Galaxy S5. I still think that and the Lumia 1020 are one of the best smartphones out there for photos. But this is great for video. The laser for autofocus, you know, really, as soon as you just press something, it focuses on it immediately, as soon as you touch the focus. So that is really, really great. And also, the speaker. I'm just going to tell you guys, this uh, when, when I saw that the speaker and the LG G3 was on the back, I was thinking, yeah, they can't really get it onto the sides, but still, that's not going to be good, especially for me, who are, where, you know, f uh, when I love my media. That is not a good placement for the speaker. Well, believe it or not, this is actually one of the best rear-facing speakers I've ever, ever, ever used on a smartphone. It's literally, it's like, even though you're facing it like this, you can hear it so, so clearly when you're watching back videos. And it goes very, very loud as well. So, great speaker, and really, I do really enjoy using this speaker as well, especially when you're watching trails for movies in the four, with the 4K quality on this 2K display. And as you saw there, you can double tap the screen to turn it on, and double tap to turn it off. Now, you can only do double tap on the notification bar or on a blank part of your home screen in order to activate that. And now we're going to move on to battery life. Now battery life on many smartphones is a problem, however a lot of them are really coming in with much better battery. I think the best battery life I've experienced on a smartphone is on the Sony Xperia Z2. That really is a wonderful smartphone and I really really do love the battery on that. Is, does this beat battery, the battery on smartphones like the Xperia Z2? Uh, not at all. Uh, the battery life on this was really quite a question mark for me. It's actually one of the reasons why this review took longer, because I was really trying to judge what the battery life is like. It seems to be all over the place. If you hardly use it, uh, for example, like if you're at work, and you're not allowed to take your phone out at work from, say, 11 till 4, like I am doing, then uh, this will last you a whole day easily. If you're, you're going to be using your smartphone every single day, like I do on the weekends and stuff like that, then the battery will just, if you want to use it as your full-time media and entertainment device, it'll take about five hours, four to five hours for the battery to drain. If you want to take care of how you use it and stuff, you can get a full day, but I wouldn't say a day and a half, unless, like I said, you're on those work hours where you don't use your phone. But, to tell you the truth, the battery is still manageable, the screen is absolutely great, it does have a bit of a pinkish tint, but that's not too bad. And overall, I've just really, really liked it, and the performance, despite what I said about the lag, is still very responsive when you're going in and out of apps. And it's a really, really nice smartphone. I've really enjoyed my time with it, and I kind of feel a bit sad that I'm going to have to send this back. But that's how it goes with all these review units, and I'm used to it now, doing this for about 2-3 years. So, thanks guys very much for watching. This has been my review of the LG G3. Thank you very much for watching all my coverage videos of the smartphone. A link to all of those videos will be in the description below, so you can check all of them out, including a gaming performance I did recently. And if you want to stay updated with my latest video content, then please click that big subscribe button you can see on your screen right now. And for also follow me on my social networks, and you can pop me questions on uh, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, or Google+. Or you can post a comment in the comment section below, and I'll answer it as soon as possible. Thanks again guys for watching and I'll see all of you next time. Take care.